This is Conor McGregor, and as of around a month ago, he was set to make his long-awaited return to the Octagon at UFC 303 after a three-year hiatus caused by a freak leg injury. His opponent was supposed to be Michael Chandler. You know this guy. Kill or be killed fighter that's put it all on the line in each of his UFC outings. Lock these two in a cage together, and you've got one of the most exciting one-rounders you'll see in the year. But we hardcore fight fans knew that this wasn't actually Connor's real opponent. This was. And with this begun one of the biggest downward spirals of a fight card that we've seen in the entire history of the UFC. As we saw fight after fight after fight get cancelled and the UFC scrambling to duct tape the mess back together. Heck, we almost got one of these in the literal day of the event. But you want to know what the funniest part about this is? The way this downward spiral started is also the same way it ended. Alex Pereira just knocked out Yuri Prohaska again at UFC 303 with one of the cleanest high kicks I've ever seen. And as we look forward to the rest of the year, one thing is clear. Alex Pereira is on a path to greatness. He's on track to become not just the fighter of the year, but now go down as one of the greatest fighters of all time. When was the last time a UFC champion stepped in on less than two weeks notice to take a fight? It's a rare sight. Just last year, Alexander Volkanovsky took on Islam Makachev for the UFC lightweight belt with only 11 days to prepare. But here's the catch. Volkanovsky wasn't defending his featherweight title. Whether he won or lost, he'd still be the king at 145 pounds. But what about those who risk it all, putting their own title on the line with barely any time to prepare? We've seen daring challengers like Jorge Masvidal and Michael Bisping step into the cage on short notice, but these guys were just challengers facing an already fight prepped champion. Now here's what makes UFC 303 truly historic, because Alex Pereira, the reigning champion at 205 pounds, didn't just step in to save the card, he put his very belt on the line, no fight camp, no preparation. He was in Australia, thousands of miles away, when the call came. Yet without hesitation, he answered. Alex Pereira's fight against Yuri Prohaska at UFC 303 constituted his fourth fight in the UFC light heavyweight division within a full year, making him one of the most active UFC light heavyweights of all time. The only light heavyweights to fight this often in a year are Anthony Smith and John Jones. Now while Anthony Smith's willingness to throw down is great, his road this past year has been a mixed bag, leaving John Jones and Alex Pereira as the only light heavyweights to fight more than 4 times in a year span and accumulate 4 wins in that time. Quite the company to have for Alex Pereira. But let's dig a little deeper. In Alex Pereira's fight against Yuri Prohaska at UFC 303, he landed 38 significant strikes. Now, why is this number so important, you may ask? Because Alex landed the same exact number of significant strikes on Yuri this time around as he did back in his fight with Yuri the first time. And he ground and pounded Yuri in the same way to win by TKO. But if you thought Pereira's shaman magic ended there, then you'd be even more surprised to find out that he also landed the same amount of significant head strikes in both fights against Yuri as well landing 21 blows to Yuri's head in both fights. Oh no, it isn't just these number coincidences that make Pereira's performance really impressive. His strike defense in his fight against Yuri also constituted his second best defensive performance in the UFC, receiving only 7 of Yuri's significant strikes. Now, if you have some problem with that just being Alex's second best defensive performance, I'll remind you guys a little bit about Yuri. Yuri Prohaska really likes to get in your face when he fights. And when I mean really, I mean really. This guy will put most of his weight on his lead leg, leaving himself open to many hand combos and even heavy leg kicks. Now while this style leaves him very open to getting slapped around by your typical light heavyweight, he does get an advantage in that he's closer to his target to land his lengthy jab and cross combos. Combine that with his aggression in his fights, and he actually becomes one of the most accurate strikers at light heavyweight, with most of his strikes landing to the dome of some unlucky fighters. Averaging a 55% strike accuracy with 51% of those strikes to the head. 
So when we see this and now zoom out to see his strike accuracy against Alex Pereira the second time around, you find out that this wasn't only Yuri's worst offensive performance, but also Yuri's worst defensive performance in his entire UFC career. And Alex Pereira was the one to do this to him, turning the Terminator we saw a few years ago in his come up into an amateur. And funnily enough, it wasn't too long ago that Alex Pereira was on the other end of the same situation. Last year at UFC 287, Alex Pereira faced a defining career moment. Knocked out by Israel Adesanya in what would become the knockout of the year isn't an easy thing to endure. Many fighters would have hung up their gloves, but not Alex. Instead, he forged a new path and ascended to the light heavyweight division. Yes, on one end, this change left his strike defense a little softened, but his chin on the other hand has only hardened. Freed from having to cut 20 additional pounds, Pereira takes the damage better than ever. After knocking out Yuri Prohaska the second time, Alex Pereira has now defended his UFC belt twice. And although many of us would like to see Alex defend it again against a certain Dagestani who's been calling him out, I think Alex is past this guy too. As we look to Alex's future, an important question has to be asked. What legacy does Alex Pereira want to leave behind? They say to be the best, you have to beat the best. And although Alex has beaten many of the best fighters across two weight classes, the GOAT himself seems to be almost ready to go. Although John Jones is still on track to fight Stipe Miocic by the end of the year, there's this funny feeling I get about a potential fight between John Jones and Alex Pereira. We're talking about a guy that's been dominating the highest level of the sport's light heavyweights, facing off against his late successor who's on that same track to greatness potentially becoming the first triple champion of the UFC, and, if you forgot, also avenging one of Glover's losses. Is Tom Aspinall more deserving of an undisputed title shot? Absolutely. But moments like this don't come too often. If I were the UFC, I'd be looking for a way to make this fight a final conclusion to an already amazing fight year.